<laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Since they are not going to get out of our hair and stop, you know, announcing to the whole world how poor and wretched we are. So this guy went to Kenya and he brought out his camera and could not wait to show the rest of the world how terrible Kenya is. So as an American who has been staying in Kenya for a few weeks, here are some of the biggest culture shocks that I've experienced so far. All of the houses and buildings are made of concrete. And all of the doors are made of steel. Oh, you got to go to the bathroom? Just pop and squat. Now, windows are luxury. Having an opening that has screens to keep bugs out is all you need. Now, I'm not going to complain because air conditioning is also a luxury that most people don't have here. And that is allowing the air to come in and cool me off from this 90 degree weather. Ketchup is for bougie people. In Kenya, it doesn't have to be luxurious. It just has to work. First of all, every Kenyan watching this video knows that you're lying. Second of all, what culture shock are you talking about? Where is the culture? Because as far as I'm concerned, there's no Kenyan culture that looks anything like what you've just described. As a matter of fact, what you've just described is nothing but a byproduct of colonialism. And you have it in America as well. California sure does have a homeless problem. Driving around town, there's homeless encampments all over the place. They're on the sides of the roads and dirt lots. There's long stretches of them on sidewalks. Some are in tents, some are in RV. I wonder why UNICEF have not gotten to this place. They obviously need help and funding to build houses, probably to, you know, drill boreholes so they can have water. There's long stretches of them on sidewalks. Some are in tents, some are in RVs. Some are actual encampments with makeshift structures. By now, we all know that every country has some level of colonial aftermath, including the United States of America. And that is where you come from. So I'm just wondering, why are you shocked? If America looks like this, why are you shocked in Kenya? And secondly, these are called culture shock videos that I'm making. If I'm going to go around showing everything that they have in common with us, and I consider that shocking, well, that's kind of insulting to them. If we are to talk about culture shock, I thought this is the type of stuff that would make you shocked, not the stuff you have in your own country. Don't do that. You know, maybe we should start traveling to these places and going to those specific poverty-stricken places with our cameras. We're talking about how I was so shocked I came to America. I can't believe how terrible it is. Going to source out for those terrible-looking places that we don't see on TV, we don't see on CNN, you know, Al Jazeera. We see Al Jazeera or Al Jazeera. They don't go to those places. So I think it's time we start going to those places. Mm -hmm. You know, since we want to be highlighting flaws, it's, it's fair we just start doing it both ways. You have shitty places, we have shitty places. You have slums, we have slums. Hey, Africans. This is America. <laughs> America, look. <laughs> See the streets? This is America. America. It's America. Look, it's America. See that? In the high school... There's never been a better time to start living the American dream. But despite what the president claims, the famous American dream is far from being achieved. 40 million people are living below the poverty line, and millions of workers will go to great lengths to stay above it. To get money, are you familiar with plasma? You give, okay. I do that twice a week. Becoming homeless overnight is what these Americans fear most, because here, the system is not very kind to those short of cash. This is Evie from editing. I just want to add something real quick. We are so poor, right? But nobody here is surviving off food stamps or unemployment checks or welfare. Nobody here is buying nothing on credit. Nobody here is getting an education with money gotten from student loans. So make this poverty make sense to me because I don't get it. I think what people need to stop doing is judging Africans and coming to an assumption of the standard of life you think we have based off the aesthetics of our countries. Like you take your country and then you take mine and then you look at which is aesthetically pleasing and then you think, oh, because this country, is, the country looks like this, at least the parts you've seen, and then you judge the whole of the country or the whole of the continent of aesthetics because you have skyscrapers here and there and, you know, you project that to the whole world and to yourself and that's what you see and that's what you judge your standard of living from or of and then you judge other people based on what you've seen and what is projected to you and then you think you are living better off because you're in a country that is aesthetically pleasing or have skyscrapers when literally people in these countries you are calling poor as per everybody is poor 
might be living better off than you. I feel that's what people are doing. You are judging Africans off the aesthetics of the country or the continent. When literally you have 20 million people in your country that is poor. But that's not being addressed, right? Now we're going to begin in the state of Colorado. The people in Denver sure know about the rise in homelessness here. Over the past few years, there's been a big spike in the number of people living on the streets in Denver, in places that were once clean and safe. The state of Colorado estimates that on any given night, there's about 10,000 people living without shelter here, but that number is actually pretty hard to measure. I mean, for one, there's lots of people living in areas that you'll never see. And a lot of times there's family who are living in hotel rooms or living in their cars and they won't want to be counted. So there are children in Africa without homes. I'm not sure whether that is supposed to be funny, but I'm just here to say that it is a wrong narrative. Africans have homes. As a matter of fact, we have homes where we don't have to pay rent or mortgage to anyone. Majority of Africans who live in rented houses are doing so because of work or luxury. Because majority of Africans have homes, free homes back in the villages where they can just go and live and nobody will ask you for rent or mortgage or anything. So I know you guys use this as a joke, but it is an inaccurate joke. Stop. It's not true. And then they spend so much time trying to get people from their country to donate money. They are fundraising here and there, getting together charity organizations to come help Africa. When you have a country that is poor in your country, like you have a number of people in your country that is enough to make another country in your country and they are poor. Make it make sense. What do they stand to gain from painting this image of Africa, promoting this poverty-stricken image of Africa? Like, like, what are you gaining from this promotion? I don't get it. So I made this video a couple of days back. I'm addressing this guy that was talking about how in Nigeria, um, we don't have clean drinking water. We drink mud water, literally what he said. You guys can go check the video out. And I addressed that. I mean, it's weird, but that's how they want their people thinking. <laughs> it's good. They, keep, they should keep thinking like that. It makes me laugh. And I had this lady in the comment section. I think she said she was from, was it Germany? I was going to put the comments up, but I went back to look for that comment and she had deleted the comment because I responded to her comments. And she was saying how um, if Africa has water, then why are they asking them to donate money? Literally even asking children to donate money to come, you know, give Africans water or, I don't know, make water or create boreholes or something. And I told her point blank, go ask the people that's taking money from you. So they can tell you what they are doing with your money. These charity organizations, I'm not saying all of them, but not all of them are pure. Corruption is everywhere. So they can come promote this poverty-stricken image for you, get you to donate money that is coming here that never gets here. Okay? And I'm not saying that there are no people in Africa that don't need help because, of course, there are people in Africa that need help. Same way there are people, obviously, in America, 20 million of them that need help. They're on the streets. I don't know how they cope during the winter because they're not going to have, like, the heating system to take care of themselves in those little um, homes they've created for themselves. It's, it's sad. It's painful to look at. But then you want to, you want to spend so much time talking about Africa when, obviously, you even need help. Like, you need help gone. You need help. I lay a giddy gun. You need strong help. But here you are. Like it's your mission in life to talk about how poor Africa is and how poor Africans are. Like, like, and, and we are just here looking at these people like, why are you people like this? Why are you people like this? Drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. I will see you in the next one. Bye.